everyone. Welcome to the Pixelated Perfect Podcast. I am super excited to kind of interview and talk with Lily. Um, she is currently a lead product designer at Nuvo Cargo, and she also is a UX UI teacher at Memorize. Memorize. Nope. Say it. Can you say it for me, Lily? Yes, of course. Memorizely. Memorizely. Okay, that makes way more sense. Um, so I'm really, really excited to dive deeper with you and hear about your career. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a good surprise to just see your email. And yeah, super excited to be here. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we're just going to dive right in. Um, let's get to the good stuff. So Lily, tell me um, kind of about how design entered your life. That is a very interesting question because my background is in communications and journalism. I study communications and journalism in Colombia, uh, but since I was in Bogota, I always felt very inspired by everything that was built in the company that I lead communications and working with the agencies and designers um, was super, super cool. And at the time, that was probably 10 years ago or more, uh, we redesigned the website and I was leading the part of content and what we're going to do, but no idea about user experience, no idea about UI. Um, but I was always, since I was a little girl, um, towards design. So that is the way that I got or kind of interested in design. And then when I moved to the US, I had the opportunity to stay after two years of being a nanny. I was an au pair. Um, and during that time, I applied to many different things in San Francisco where I used to live in order to see what do I wanted to do if I wanted to go into marketing and communications. That was basically what I did in Colombia. Or if I wanted to see other opportunities in design, that was also something that I love so much. So um, I applied as a good immigrant trying to figure out the ways to pay so much for school in the US because it's super expensive. Um, in an organization that was giving people um, lottery to be part of the marketing program at General Assembly, actually. And I passed the process, but I didn't want the lottery, and it was super, super sad. And, but that brought me into the place of, well, maybe design is what I wanted to do. And I applied to an organization where I got the chance to actually do um, two week intense of just creating design with Adobe Cloud. And I learned so much and I just find out that design really was in my veins and I really wanted to do it. So um, after that period, I decided to jump into a starting visual design because in San Francisco, the term of UX UI was all the time since I was there. But I wasn't feeling very confident with my English at the time. So I decided to jump first in visual design just to understand more about design and what it's about composition, um, creativity, how to bring and have a good sense of, um, yeah, I don't know, cohesive design. Um, so I started visual design. I got the chance to work in an e-commerce company for two years. And from there is where everything kind of bring me where I am right now. During that my time in the e-commerce company, I got the chance to redesign the website and switch kind of my title from visual design to digital designer, but going into UX UI. And I start my studies in UX UI at Berkeley University, which was great. And yeah, from there, the rest, we can jump in it. But that is basically how I jump into design. Yes. OK, I have so much to unpack here. That was really, really awesome. Um, so I am curious, so you, you kind of started off in communications and journalism, that's what you were doing, um, and then you had always kind of been interested in design, and then you came to the U.S., was the, what was the reason why you wanted to come to the U.S.? Was it like for work, for whatever? No, so as I mentioned before, I came as an au pair because it was yes. the only program that my parents could afford. I come from a very humble family in Colombia and they sponsored my trip to Colombia. When you come as an au pair, you have to pay an agency that finds the family. And it was a really good process for me because I was still very young. I was 24 years old. Um, so I thought it would be a good time just to leave the country and learn English. That was the main purpose of coming to the US. It wasn't 
planning all these amazing things that have been happening. Um, so yeah, that was the reason why I came to the U.S. to learn English. Oh, wow. So did you have any English background? Nothing. You came no. here and you were like, oh my gosh, I'm thrown into a country and I don't speak the language. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, literally. So I didn't speak any English um, since like eight years ago. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lisa, yeah. That's amazing. Um, that's like very inspirational. My My husband is Italian and I've been trying to learn Italian and we've been married for three years and I feel like I have nothing. So I know how hard it is to try to learn a language and that's really, really, really amazing. And to just throw yourself into that environment. Like, obviously I feel like that says a lot about you and kind of who you are as a person. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, well, first of all, leaving my career in Colombia and coming to clean literally diapers. <laughs> that was just a big switch. And then from yes. there, being exposed to many different things and living in San Francisco. Um, yeah, it was just a different experience. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. So um, you you mentioned kind of boot camps. So that was something that you, once you, I guess my question is like, what was the transition from like being an au pair and you being like, okay, design is like where I see myself and this is where I want to spend my time and energy? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, I got the chance to have this, a scholarship that allowed me to be in these two weeks um, immersed design program that I didn't have to pay anything. Thanks God for San Francisco and Bay Area video collection because that's where I got it. And from there, I just found that I really wanted to design and I remember designing actually a coding website talking about sustainability in fashion, which I'm very interested too. And yeah, I just thought that, oh my God, I really want to design. That This is what I'm calling from. Um, so yeah, after that, when I finished the program, I used my few savings that I had at the time because rent in San Francisco is super expensive as is in New York and basically pay myself with the credit card since I have a good credit score and was able to pay for my, my visual design program. Amazing. Amazing. So what would you say to listeners out there that maybe um, are immigrants or maybe don't speak perfect English and are interested in design? Like, how do you, what would you suggest? Would you suggest doing a design program? What, what kind of advice would you give? That is a really good question because right now I'm teaching UX UI design and mostly the people that I'm teaching is the ones who are here in the US. Um, I always tell my students that if they're very interested in design and even though they're working for many years, um, in different industries, they can do it because if it's the calling that they have deep in their heart, they're going to be successful no, no matter what. And as an immigrant, there are many things that you could do to jump into what you want. I think the first part is actually understanding what design is, especially UX, UI, because everyone thinks that it's a very easy job to do, but the reality is not. It combines a lot of user research, a lot of empathy for the users, um, but understanding that if you really want to jump into creating and trying to build solutions, and I'm saying solutions because there are no solutions 100%, it's always going to be MVPs and you are going to idea and make it better. Um, it's just to jump into the, the field and ask questions to people that you can learn and figure out that really is what you want. Um, because if you are in the transition of a second career in your life, that takes time, um, it's not as easy. But I would say social media and YouTube has so much content that you can start doing. The most important part is that you are very disciplined and have a goal of what you want. Because if you just think that UX, UI is going to be really good because you can work and travel wherever you want, uh, then it's going to be a different experience. Yes, um, I think that's really great feedback. I think a lot of career switchers and I want your opinion on this. A lot of career switchers are like, oh, I'm interested in design. I, I can just jump in. I can take a boot camp. I'm just going to be good at it. Um, and I think it's interesting that like after you did this um, course and then you, you decided to focus on more of that visual side, usually my advice to junior designers is to really, I think that, sorry, now I'm getting confused. So I think that UX is a learned skill. I think you can learn it. I think visual 
is harder. And if you don't have that mindset and that skill and you haven't studied it, it's not as easy to pick up. What do, what do you think about that? Absolutely. I mean, that was basically what I did through Wilders because I didn't understand a lot of things in English, of course, at the time. Uh, but I thought that the only way to became a really good designer was by having a really good foundation of visual, visual design skills. And especially because when you are putting together a portfolio, you have to focus on your visual design because you are trying to sell yourself and you have to have really good assets that are going to show your case studies. You can have a really good user research, you can have a really good ideation, wireframing, but if your UI and final prototypes doesn't look in a matter of catching the attention of the person who is reviewing your portfolio in probably one minute, then you are not going to go anywhere. And the part of visual design is really important because it teaches the person to understand what is composition, what is hierarchy, what is um, the whole entire concept of having a really good uh, cohesive feeling for design. And if you don't have that, it's going to be very hard for you to understand UI components, um, variants, and all of the different things that you create when you are designing. Well said. That was amazing. I completely agree. And I think for listeners out there that are maybe thinking of taking the switch or in a boot camp now, um, I do think that really honing in on those UI skills is super, super important. I think a lot of boot camps, they like split up the time. They're like half UI, half UX. Um, which I get, I think that's like an overview, but I think you can take it at the next step, which sounds like that's what you did. You like knew what you wanted, you knew that visual was the place to go and you kind of wanted to hone in on those skills. So so let's kind of pick up from there. So um, you focused on visual design um, and then you were at this e-commerce company, you were there for, for two years, you said? Yeah. Doing visual design. So what was that process well, visual like? Visual design the first, sorry to interrupt, visual design the first year and then I start working with the developer that we have as a consultant and uh, we have a um, Shopify uh, platform where we basically hack the system. So we wanted to hack the template that we had and I created my wireframes to improve the blog, to improve the homepage and you can see it live. Right now, it's, um, the company is called Rough Linon, and I, I have deep appreciation for the CEO and founder. They're all were women working, creating beautiful linens. Um, and I learned so much. And in that, in that sense, it was really nice because I had the opportunity to work with marketing, with the developer at the time, and understanding what was the best thing for them in order to help the user to find out all the products that they were selling because they were selling for bath, home, um, apparel, they have so many things, but the information architecture, that for the people who doesn't know what information architecture is, is basically how the information is laid out in the website or for the user to find it very easy. It was bad, it was only two tabs that say shop home and shop apparel, which means that 30 products were under that tab and probably the users didn't know. And then another product under apparel. So it was a really good case study and it was a really good step for me while studying in, at Berkeley to understand the process of user research. We create the user personas, um, understand the user flow and just improving the, the whole entire homepage and redesign it. That's amazing. Um, so what was that process like? You were kind of still in school, you had done visual and then you were making that transition into like information architecture, more of the UX side of things. Well, yeah, they like just a asked me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they asked me, I told them, you know, I'm going to be taking these classes after work. It was a whole entire year of a program, super intense. Um, the company wasn't in San Francisco. I have to drive from San Rafael to San Francisco and then from there go to school. It was, it was crazy, but they really value my input in terms of the UX UI that I was learning and trusting me. And yeah, I think we did a really good job with the, with the team and I learned so much. And the most important part was I felt confident as an only designer to say, I think we can get better. And we hired another consultant in marketing that just helped them to improve their sales. So yeah, it was, it was a very interesting place for me to just leave the company in really good terms and have a really good case study as well. Yeah. 
That's great. One more thing before we move on, because I think you just said something really interesting is you felt confident as the only designer. Um, communication is so important. It's like that soft skill that a lot of people that are thinking of making the switch don't fully grasp. Even people that have been in design or like graphic designers, you don't fully know what that means. And so in your opinion, what how were you able to like have that confidence, feel that confidence, have that soft skill? Learn the yeah. soft skill. I think having a background in communications and journalism definitely helped. Definitely. Uh, I work in TV and radio in Colombia, interviewing people for almost two years and also creating the communications area. That definitely helped. Um, but you are saying something that is very true. There is a lot of new designers and designers who were just graphic designers, happy creating craft that don't know how to express themselves when they're trying to talk about their designs. And that is so, so important because we as designers have to convince our stakeholders of what our ideation part that is not in our own bias. So pay attention to that. Uh, it's through the user research that you create, understanding what the problem is and creating a hypothesis that how might we are going to improve this specific product um, are going to communicate with your PMs and people in the team like marketing and also developers, because there is so much that you have to communicate. So I think a good way to improve your communication skills is by actually understanding what you're trying to solve, go in the process of understanding your users, and then from there, placing all these amazing ideas that you will have in the ideation phase into wireframes and communicate what the expectations are. Yes, again, so well said. I feel like you're really, <laughs> I feel like people are gonna absolutely love this one. So, I think that you said something that I think is really interesting again, is that you're taking all of these ideations and you're turning them into wireframes to better communicate. I think that when they teach the stages of like UX, UI, I don't think they fully explain what a wireframe is and why it's important. And I think you just explained it in a very easy way for people to understand. It's like, you're doing all this ideation, you have all these ideas, how can you express them to your team? How can you express them to the stakeholders? Well, you start to visualize some key elements that make sense so that you can start to better communicate that. So I think that was a great way, a great definition of wireframing out there. Um, yeah, absolutely. And highlighting all the research that you have and knowing that what the user is telling you is going to improve the business of the company. So because if the user is happy, that means they're going to have more sales, they're going to have more subscriptions, they're going to have more registrations whatever the company or industry is going to do, if the user and UX, UI person focus or pro designer focus, then it's going to be more easy for you because you have a um, good argument towards your designs. Yes, love it. Um, okay, so tell me what happened. So you parted ways from um, this company that you love, appreciated, was great. What, what was next for you? So I moved to Sweden uh, because my boyfriend is a Swedish boy and I decided to move to Sweden for a period of time just to get out of San Francisco. There was a lot of personal stuff that happened uh, in there that made me grow so much and I'm very grateful because of that. Um, but yeah, I decided to move to Sweden one, two months before COVID happened and then I got stuck in Sweden for six months, which I think it was the best place to be because in Sweden, COVID didn't happen at all. They were not as strict. I uh, actually have to ask my friend to create a mask for me because they were not selling it anywhere, um, which in the US were selling every, every single company was selling a um, mask. Um, so during that time in Sweden, I focused a lot in actually roughly you not know, let me work remotely for them. But then after five months, I say, hey, I cannot go back. I don't know, I, I can't go back. And they're like, okay, we are going to need someone who is here because I was working in six, nine hours difference. Um, right. So during that time, I just focused in creating what I wanted to do. And I got some people that my boss referred me to create their websites and just basically do freelance work. So during that time, I did a lot of free, freelance work. Thanks God, I got, good gigs that maintain me. I was able to go back to the US again. Um, and I was very eager to find a way, even though during COVID, to find a job that I will grow more and bring the expertise that I have into a team. So I was super, super intense 
asking for feedback in my portfolio, uh, joining ADP list when ADP list was a spreadsheet, uh, and I met Felix, and I got my portfolio picked from one of the designers at Dropbox just to review in front of a hundred people, and it was amazing. And just just learning and talking with people and understanding what was no what what I needed to do in order to be able to jump into that job that I wanted because I didn't want to be just freelancer. Um, so yeah, I think all the help that I received during that period when I came back in COVID, um, it was really good. I didn't land into a job for a referral or anything. I actually jumped through my job through a Slack community that for Latin people, if you want to be part of it, it's called Tequeria. And I saw the PM posting the offer and I applied and yeah, everything just happened. They liked me. I did a good home assignment presented and yeah, for them was uh, a really good experience. That was in an agency company. Amazing. Um, I love that. That's really, that's really interesting because I think what's really important for designers is to make connections and I think that sustained you, like you got some really great referrals and you were able to do that freelance thing um, and learn and grow and kind of do your own thing. And then you made the decision that you wanted to get that full-time job. So I think that's something that's like been reoccurring through all my interviews is like com connections are so, so, so important. Um, yeah, but, but this... actually I forgot something to say. Yeah. There. I only have one case of study that I felt very proud that was rough lean on because I was working with a developer, marketing and all of that. The other ones were just as a consultant. So I didn't feel as, as, as confident, which is a thing that we all designers at the beginning and uh, until now I am a pro designer and sometimes I don't have the confidence to many things. But uh, in order to have a second case study, what I did was create Soldoodles, which is a platform that I interview artists and illustrators to inspire people to create more art. And I, I did it because I wanted to create just this platform where people can find a calendar where they can go see different ideas to illustrate every single month and also finding and reading inspired stories of illustrators um, to be better because art is also something that I love. I love illustration and I did it a lot in quarantine. So I had that as my, my case study and surprisingly when I was interviewing, I was telling them about my, my project that is still running. I launched with Pablo Estendi, which is an amazing designer from Mexico. Um, and yeah, until now, people love Soldurols. And I think that if you don't have a case study that you haven't worked with a company or you haven't had the opportunity to work into a team, make some of your projects personal projects in something that you can create as a product. And that definitely is going to show how much you have um, in your heart to create and to become a UX UI designer as well. Yes, I think that's a really great, I think that's great advice. And I think what's really important in that case study and something that you obviously did is like, you have to see it through. Like if you come with some ideas and you like build out a prototype, I think that's okay. Like that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think what people want to see, especially in interviews is like, how did you take it to the next level? How yeah. did you meet business requirements? How did you grow something like that is key. And it sounds like that's what you did. And that's something you're passionate about. And that's really, really cool. And I would love to link that. Um, yeah, so conversation, <laughs> all of these links that you've been talking about, but that's really, really cool. And it's still happening. So what does that look like right now? How is that process of Manager. Yeah, Soldurals Soldura is my baby. I actually have five people in the team that volunteer because I'm not making any money yet. That is the next steps, I guess. Uh, but yeah, basically it's just a platform where you can go find different interviews with illustrators and artists, learn about their creative process, how they jump into illustration or becoming an artist, and just understand because I found being a creative is also understanding and develop your own style, which is a uh, probably for everyone when you want to create anything, you are always imitating because nothing is new. We are always copying from different artists, from different people, but then what is going to say for success is your style and how you can communicate what you want. So anyway, Soldurals basically has that in the website. I'm, I'm hoping to create more interviews as well in our Instagram uh, with the reels and yeah. I love that. Okay, I have one more question about this. This is really, really cool. I'm excited to dive deeper on this. Um, you talked about like the creative process. 
Um, so a question for you is, and you say you illustrate and that's something you're doing in quarantine. And this is something, a problem I have. So like we're designers in our day-to-day jobs, right? Like you are a lead designer, you're working and then taking that into the personals. Like I'm like, oh, I still want to be creative. And sometimes it's hard to find your voice and like come up with how to do something for yourself versus how to do it for your customers. What advice do you have for people like me who get stuck in that? Absolutely. I think the most important part when you are creating is to draw or create what you want to reflect you have. And if you see my illustrations, they're all super cute with happy smiles and good energy. That is basically what I want to express to the world. If I get a client who wants to work with me with this type of illustrations, then they're welcome. But I'm not going to change who I am and what I'm expressing with my art because one client wants a different thing. So I think that that is very important when you are creating something or anything um, in the art artist aspect, no, in UX UI, it's very different. But yeah, I found illustration as an adult very therapeutic. And it's a way that I can actually disconnect from all the noise that is always around us, social media, um, so many things that are around us nowadays that kind of like take us the focus of what make, make us happy. Um, so for me, illustration is just super therapeutic and that is the reason why I always uh, publish a calendar every, every day, to, every month, to have people with an idea of what to illustrate. So for example, right now we're illustrating uh, fruits with a form of a character. So my illustrations right now is an eggplant with a happy face, a banana, zanahoria, also with a happy face. So then you're just going to start rediscovering that the more you do it, the more you understand what the style is. For me, I'm not an abstract illustrator that creates massive you know, buildings and very detailed. Mine is very simple and to the point, and that is okay. And I love that. That's great. Yeah, I think being true to yourself is key. And I think everyone has to like find what that truth is to them and something that they're going to continue to get up and do that. Those illustrations every day. So I think, yes, that's really great advice. Um, Okay, so we're in this journey right now where you. um, Oh, I know what I want to ask you about. So going back to the Slack group. And I think this is a really great advice to designers that are looking for jobs. I think finding connections, maybe not through just applying to jobs, but like finding other ways. Um, And the fact that you found the job through Slack and I'm a part of a bunch of Slack groups and I post jobs on random Slacks. I think that's an amazing place for designers to potentially go to find jobs. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are so many communities nowadays, especially after COVID, a lot of people found the way of communicating and connecting because at the end, that's what we want as a humans. We, more than being famous, rich, and all of these things that are so materialist, um, the connection that you can have with somebody is going to matter more than anything. And if you have friends that love you and support you, then you're going to feel fulfilled. So when you are trying to apply for jobs, you have to think about a way that you are just don't asking for a favor because that is a red flag. And I, I, I received many messages in LinkedIn. And when I was in my, my transition, as I mentioned before, receiving feedback from my portfolio, connecting with people in the industry that had so much experience, I was very, very grateful for that. And I, I thought that the day that I will make it, I will help our people and there is a reason why I also teach in UX UI and mentoring through ADP list because I want to give back to the community, especially Latin people and well everyone to be honest with you. But when I receive LinkedIn comments that are just can you please review my, my portfolio and tell me what you think? I will never respond to those comments because I want to have a real connection and communication with the person who is asking for a big favor. And because it's my time as well. So you have to think that if a person that you are reaching out is going to give you feedback, you actually have to at least have some time to communicate with 
with them. I like to have my ADP list mentorings because I can see the people, I can learn about the backgrounds, I can see their virtual faces. It's so important. I just don't want to give a feedback away for what. I, that doesn't help me and that doesn't help the other person. Yes, I think that's well said. And it, yeah, it goes back to connections and communication and we're all people, we all want those connections. So if you want that feedback, you need to put in that work to make that connection and to find someone where you're gonna get the feedback that you're looking for too. Like that, it's like someone that you idolize or you have respect for or that you understand them. So when you get that feedback, it's in line. Exactly, 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 yeah. Great, yeah, great, great piece of feedback. Um, so tell me about this new position that you started. What what was that like kind of going back to being at a company? Yeah, so when I jumped into Better, who was the agency where I work, it was amazing. I was leading one of their clients and really got in the team so much that they renewed the contract with the agency and the business owner just loved me so much. And I had so much... Uh, appreci appreciation also for Bear because I learned so much and I got the opportunity to work with dev teams that they were testing the designs that I have to review all the UI before it was published. Um, so yeah, it was a really good experience. But I, I am my I am the first immigrant in my family and I came to the US by myself and I feel that. I have many dreams that I really hope I can accomplish in my life. And just being in a position where I was feeling that it was only creating UI changes and just not doing the whole pro design thinking that is so important. Um, I imagine one day working at Spotify or Google, creating platforms that thousands of people will join. Um, so because of that, I just started feeling like I wasn't getting as much as I wanted in my career. I, I hope I, I can grow more. So all this to say, I had an amazing experience at the company, but I thought it was a really good time for me just to move into a position that will allow me to grow more as a professional, which is so key. Um, and the universe just brought me new cargo when I was in Sweden. And I always go back to Sweden <laughs> and I receive it and I was like, wow, this sounds kind of interesting. And I started to hear about the, how the CEO raised money for Nuevo Cargo and my boss who is the head of Pro, uh, listened to her experience as an immigrant in the US and make it in very important places like Dropbox and more. And I just got so inspired and I just felt that I needed to work with, with, with them. I needed to be part of this Latin community again that I actually pushed back for many years in order to learn English. I didn't want to have Latin friends who speak Spanish. I didn't want to. Um, I literally forced myself to do it, but it's been so nice. And I um, jumped with them as a senior product design role. Uh, but then after three months, they promote me as a lead designer. And I had the opportunity to be leading now, making growth plans for designs uh, designers as well and the hope is just to grow the the team more and continue making amazing products that are going to help people in mexico city and us okay. mexico mexico in general no mexico city only <laughs> ah, there you go um so i mean yeah that was very inspiring i want to know kind of you as a designer say you when you were in this agency you were doing ui and then you wanted more you want to do more of the full ui ux process and then you've got a position at this amazing company that you felt really connected what is that process going from that to like a senior product designer and then quickly jumping into design lead i think when i was doing ui uh better which i i that is something that people has to put a lot of attention when they're applying and in the process of the interview as well, because they might say that it's pro design, but they maybe it's just only focusing the UI and you don't want to be frustrated for a year just doing UI work. I did a lot of pro design research. I was involved in doing user flows and everything um, at Baird as well, but I, I wasn't fulfilled with that. And yeah, I think right now, just having the opportunity to create a pro that I know is going to be launched that a lot of people are going to be using and the other product, of course, was getting used to, but it's a different experience. 
it literally bring me into this human design skills that we have to grow every single day. It's not just happened by magic. And if you read the amazing UX uh, book, the, um, what is the one? The 100, I, I'm bad with names always. There is a book that we all read and it's with the, with the little thing for the kitchen. Now I forgot. Oh, uh, um, the, hun- the 100, yes. what is it? Now I forgot, but that book is not going to help you to create human design, especially something that I, I learned so far is that we, when we are adults, we learn very different. When we are kids, we learn by listening to what people say, by trying, and as an adult, we learn 20% by getting it from a class and 70% by actually doing the work and there is another percent that I'm missing, but it's actually just putting yourself in there. So to respond to your question, I jump into a senior product design without no knowing about anything supply chain because it's a very different industry. I was working in e-commerce and the other agency had different projects that was very different. Um, so I think it's just the, the feeling that you have in order to grow and make that goal as a UX UI designer come through. Um, because many people can be just, yeah, I want to be a pro designer, but then from there, they don't want to go more. So it's like, how much do you want to grow in your career? And from there, put to places. And I'm talking about sometimes gender. When men apply to jobs, they don't care if they have the experience. And I don't want to be gender, I love men. I think men are important and, you know, but the reality is like when yes. men literally apply to jobs, they don't care if they have the experience or not, but they have enough confidence to sell themselves and to also say that they can do it, even if they don't know. And to be honest with you, many people don't know. We don't know what we're doing multiple times. We just have to research. And there is the reason why design is so beautiful because we have to go back to the beginning of so many things. Um, so anyway, I, please don't say that I hate men. I love men and I think they're very important, but it is true. No, and true. that's data, right? Like yeah, that's actually proven, yeah. like that's yeah. statistics. It is so, data, it is yes. data. Especially as Latinas, we only were 12% in tech and I want to be that Latina that yeah. is going to shine in the world besides narcos. Um, because I'm from Colombia, you know, the yeah. typical joke that I hate, and I think yeah. people should be aware that we Colombians don't like to hear when they say narcos and yes. <laughs> all of those yes. things. I think it's very, very sad when that happens. Yes. So I want to be that Latina who can change the world and create designs that are going to change people's lives. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was so, like, let's just take a moment to process that. Yes, I, I love everything you said. I think that um, us being women and move, making our way in the product design space is really powerful. And I also think what's really important and kind of, I feel like summarizes some of the things you were saying is like, us as women might do things a little differently than let's say men would do things. And we can bring that into all of these spaces as well. Like there's all these other ways that we can conduct business and do things that are different than maybe what's been historically done and that's up to us to kind of push for other ways yeah Um, i think dreaming it's no it shouldn't be um like a mistake for anyone dream should be always in there and should make you feel that you can do it i always tell my students if i was able to jump into the role without being a Latina immigrant that didn't have anything literally and trying to find my way to make it into this America, corp American, <laughs> you know, yeah. experience, they can do it. So I, the only limit I think is in our mind and that, that's all. If you want something, you have to do it and trust your energy. Yes, a thousand percent agree. Um, and I, I mean, I, I guess my last question for you is like, where do you see yourself going? Where, where do you want to be in five years and 10 years? 
Yeah, that is a really good question. I, I have a lot of dreams and I'm very ambitious as well. I think we Latinas grew up with that mentality. Our moms just put that in ourselves. And I do have a lot of dreams. I, I would love to be able to, as I say, work at Spotify one day or Google, especially Spotify, because I have so much of a connection with uh, the Swedish community. It, Spotify is a company that was built by a Swedish um, male. And I found it very, very interesting, the culture. I just love it so much. So I, I don't know. I would love to work in those places, but in a place where I can manage a team and I can bring my Latinity into place and create products that are going to be a little bit more diverse than what it is right now because what is happening is just people are just following the same rules and it's really nice when now companies are open a little bit more to Latin people and putting people into places. So I would love to be in the management roles for these amazing companies. Maybe I will jump into another company and it's totally okay. My dream was always work at Airbnb, for example, but it always changed, you know? Yeah. Um, and I would love to have a company one day that can focus in sustainability and working for the environment, not by creating a product that I'm going to sell and it's going to be trash to the environment. I, I don't think that is something that, that I would like to do. I would love to use technology to help the communities and the environment. And I'm thinking in something, we will see if that comes one day, <laughs> but it's all matter of time. For now, I'm just very happy teaching uh, to my students through Memorize, which has been an amazing experience, super inspired by the CEO as well, Sander, um, creating this incredible, incredible education system as well, and super inspired by my CEO and boss as well at Nuevo Cargo. So one day at a time, super happy where I am right now, but I definitely have a lot of dreams and I really hope I can be a very successful CEO one day of a company that can help people's life and the environment as well. I love it. Yes, I feel your passion and I'm so excited to follow your journey and see you get to all of these places and to be that CEO of this company that you're so passionate about. So this is amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I think there's so many great nuggets for designers that want to get started or continue to grow. I think you have such an inspirational story um, and I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Of course, thank you so much, Diane, and I just hope everyone who is listening to this um, and listen to my story, little, little parts of the stories build who you are, and sometimes we are in phases in life that we think we're going to be in that dark hole forever, but the reality is if you have a final dream, you will be able to achieve those goals. Um, so that would be my takeaway. And yeah, I'm always happy to chat, always happy to provide feedback. Um, of portfolios through ADP list, no through LinkedIn message. Um, but yeah, super happy to support the design community as people did it with me when I, when I need help. Yes, we will definitely put all of these, will obviously point people to you, to all of your websites, all of this great these great resources that you've given us today so that people can continue to explore and reach out. Um, in the right way, the best way possible for you and them. Um, and yeah, so excited to continue to follow your journey. Thanks again so much. Thank you so much. And the same for, for you. This podcast seems like an amazing um, initiation or initiative for people to learn more about design and what to do when they're jumping into a new role um, as a pro designer. So best of luck to you and your team. And I love this type of communication journalist project. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. Yes, we will keep you updated too. Amazing. Thank you so much.